But now I can also set the hover state. And you'll see that it's picked up the default green hover state from theme JSON, but I can change that to whatever I want. I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to make it orange. That's probably obvious enough. And if I go back over to these links here, sure enough, yellow by default, and the hover is orange. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name's Dave Smith, Gutenberg core team member and full-time WordPress contributor. And in today's video, we're going to be looking behind the scenes at a new feature which will allow theme developers to set element interactivity states in theme JSON and users to control these same states via the global styles UI. Let's get into it. So what do we mean when we say interactivity states? Well, the easiest way to explain this is probably to look at a common navigation bar. When you move to this navigation bar on WordPress.org, as you move over the elements, there is a subtle change in the styling of the items. And that is what I call an interactivity state. Other examples of this include a focus style state, such as the dotted line and background color change you can see on the navigation here. And also active, disabled, empty and target pseudo states. So talking technically for a minute, these pseudo states, official name for them is actually pseudo classes. And that's how it's defined in the CSS spec. And as we can see here on MDN docs, there are various pseudo selectors or classes that are defined using the semicolon syntax on an element. So in this case, we have a button element and we're saying when you hover your pointer over the button element, then the color should be blue. And this is defined in CSS. So let's take a look at how that works in a theming context. Okay, so what we have here is a version of the Archeo theme by Automatic. And out of the box, Archeo D doesn't have to find many uh, hover styles or interactivity styles for link elements. In fact, it's, it's pretty basic. So let's go ahead and add one ourselves. And the standard way we go about doing this is uh, in the theme CSS file, we would say anchors for links on hover. I want you to have a color of, uh, let's say, green. Okay, and we save that file, we switch back to Chrome. And now what we should see is when we hover over the elements that's changing to green. That's not the clearest, but you, you kind of see the color change there. And you know, that's fine, it's worked for a long time, but it does have limitations. That styling data, the, the, the information about how to style links when they're hovered is stored in CSS. And CSS is not the easiest thing to uh, be machine readable. And therefore it's going to be very difficult in the future to allow interactivity states to be presented to users via the global styles UI. Now, for those of you who don't know, global styles exists up here in the top corner in the editor, and it allows you to just set uh, all um, styles for various elements and various things about the editor and on the site from a single place. So if I say here links, I want all links to be yellow, and sure enough, the links are now yellow. But what I don't have is a way to say, but on hover or on focus or on active, I want them to be red. There's no way for me to do that. So I'm forced to go into CSS like we just saw and set that manually. So what we need to do is make those rules, those interactivity states rules available to be set in theme JSON. And then down the line, we can expose them in the global styles UI. So I'll reset the global styles there so we don't get confused. And we'll switch back to our editor and we're gonna see how we can migrate this style over to theme JSON. So I'm gonna take out that CSS rule now, save it and switch over to the theme JSON for the Archeo theme. And I'm gonna scroll down to this elements definition, and this is the top level elements definition within the styles block, as you can see here, theme JSON styles elements. And I'm gonna define a new element definition for link. And inside link, I'm going to set the color and I'm going to set specifically the text color and I'm going to make the color red. And we've been able to do this for a while and this will now set all links by default to red and I haven't had to write any CSS whatsoever. There we go, we've got all our links of red. This is useful for theme developers because then what we have now is in global styles, it picks up on this and it presents that by default all links will be red. Still the user can change it but again, by default, it uses the definition set in global in, in theme JSON. So let's do the same thing now, but for the hover state. So back over in theme JSON, I now set a top level key within link to be the pseudo selector hover. 
very similar to the CSS. You'll note there's a leading colon and then the name of the selector. So it's very much like CSS. And inside that, I'm going to set all the rules and all the styles that I want to happen when the hover state is activated on links. And it's actually quite easy because I'm just going to copy and paste the one above, sort the indentation out and the leading colon, and then I'm going to say, uh, what's a good color to be stands out green? Let's save that. So now we're saying the standard default color for links should be red, but on hover, we want to make them green. And let's see if that's worked in the editor. Sure enough, our links are still red, but when I hover over them, they turn green. Now, by default, this feature is actually only available to be activated on the link element. So we can't set it on any other. So for example, if I try to define a hover state on this H6, like so, the editor is actually gonna lint that and say hover is not allowed, neither is focus. In fact, neither is any pseudo selector state because they're only allowed on the link element. And that's at the moment, that's an intentional choice. We're keeping the scope fairly limited while we're exploring this feature. But in the future, we expect it to probably roll out to buttons and other types of elements that would benefit from having interactivity set. It's also locked down to only a subset of pseudo selectors. So uh, you're allowed to set hover, you're allowed to set focus, and you're allowed to set active, but you're not allowed to set at the moment, for example, disabled. But again, these states can be added to in the future and iterated as required. Hey, you enjoying the video? Please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. But one thing you can do with this feature is set the link elements in a particular block. So let's have a look at doing that now. And I think the most common, well, one of the most common use cases for this interactivity states initially is going to be with the navigation block. And here we go, we've got the, the core navigation block and the styles for that. And similarly to what we did before, we're going to add an elements section to define how the sub elements of the navigation block should behave. And we're gonna set the behavior for the styles rather for the link element as we did globally just a minute ago. And this time we're gonna say color and we're gonna choose a different color. In fact, we're going to say color text and we're gonna choose, let's say blue by default. And we're going to set a hover state for navigation to have a different color. So again, I'm gonna copy that block from the default state, paste it in here, and this time I'm gonna say hot pink. Ah, hot pink, everyone's favorite color. So now I'm saying any elements of the type link which are inside the core navigation block, I want the default color to be blue, but when I roll over it and trigger the hover pseudo state, then I want the text to be hot pink. So let's have a look at how that looks in the editor. There we go, the default state is blue and when we hover over it, we get the hot pink color. And if, for comparison, if we see standard links, global links still have the original red standard and green rollover. So this allows us to really narrow down how we want our link elements to be styled in interactivity states on a per block basis. So now we have basic support for setting interactivity in theme JSON on link elements, we can take this to the next level and expose that behavior for users to configure through global styles. And there is a PR open here, number 41976, where I'm starting to explore this. And let's have a look at that and sneak preview in the editor right now. So I'll switch across. I will open the global styles interface. I'll go to colors. And you'll see here, links has now got four color swatches next to it. Looks a bit rough around the edges, but the PR is still in progress. If I click on links, I do get the default swatch palette for links where I can set the default color. You can see it's changing between colors over on the everything that's not the navigation block. But now I can also set the hover state. And you'll see that it's picked up the default green hover state from theme JSON, but I can change that to whatever I want. I'm gonna make it uh, I'm gonna make it orange, that's probably obvious enough. And if I go back over to these links here, sure enough, yellow by default, and the hover is orange. If I set the hover to be uh, blue, hover is now blue. And I can do pretty much whatever I want. I can set the focus state, I can set the active state, and this is all through the Global Stars interface. But if I decide I don't like any of that, I can reset the defaults, and it will pick up again on the defaults that we set here. We set the link standard color to be red and the hover to be green. 
and it's picked the green up from this hover definition here. If we said I want the hover standard from ThemeJS to be blue and open the global styles palette under colors, links, sure enough, hover, we have it's picked up on the default set in ThemeJSON. So we can see now the reason why we've moved these interactivity states into the machine readable JSON format means that we can then consume them in the global styles UI and expose them for configuration by users as required. I hope you've enjoyed this look behind the scenes at how you can set interactivity states in theme JSON and global styles. If you have, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more WordPress and Gutenberg content. I'll see you next time. Bye.